Right, so welcome to this Codex Supplement review for Iron Hands. I think it's a great idea that Games Workshop have done standard space between Codex and then different supplements. It really lets you into more of the fluff of these different chapters and the design to enhance the various styles of play, the different battle tactics that these chapters use. A, a real chance, perhaps the first time for Games Workshop to really get into it quite deep. Uh, other times it's just been a little little bonuses and so on they've really been quite small not very significant but now you can create very strong themes based green armies depending on uh, the chapter you go for so i think it's an excellent move and hopefully i really hope it's going to be the direction they go with the ashramidatarum i've said this before but hopefully they go down the same route with the ashramidatarum uh, uh, standard codex and then supplements for different regiments and again able to build a very sh different strong themed perhaps even more so uh, than Space Marines, a lot of variety in the Ashram of Tarim. This would be a good route for Games Workshop to go down. Um, so it lets, it lets you go deeper into the fluff and the backstory and so on because I would dedicate a separate book to each of these chapters. So Iron Hands, what I've heard, I've just finished playing a game against uh, these here. Uh, Tom Cove here is using his Red Scorpions. I use them as a successor chapter of the Iron Hands. Try out the tactics and seem solid enough. So we'll cover everything here. Unique units, war traits, stratagems, and so on, all here in this video. And it'll be a tactica type video as well, so I'll sort of cover uh, my own ideas for tactics and so on. If you want to see all the Space Marine entries and the standard codex and check out that codex review, that's already up and running here on the channel. So the Iron Hands, Sons of Ferris Menace. So there they are. Games Workshop showing off the Primaris models. They are fighting away. A strong theme, it's very, it is striking that black colour that runs throughout and then uh, different weapons and so on picked out in that. Almost white, it's a bit off white, but it's virtually white colour. Yeah, and if I was painting them I'd do this here, it's some kind of glowing colour, they've got the blue going on. Just it's another colour that you can introduce introduce into the colour scheme. So structure, chapter organisation. First company, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Loads of background information. Seventh, eighth company, ninth, and tenth as well. All your Phobos type units just there. Chapter command. Histories of the Iron Hands. It's 30k. Brilliant artwork here. Yeah. Fantastic artwork. Absolutely superb. The Fate of the Gorgon. Again, references back to 30k here. The Moray Schism. Purging of Comte Quoll. Stygian Reforging. Fascinating read, especially if you're into the chapter. What a reward here. You know, big fan of Iron Hands and you get tons of background story. I think it's brilliant. Wars of Iron. And they are fighting away against the Tau. It's a good matchup. Cool. Iron Father, Molcan, Phaeros, Phaeros, Phaeros. Flesh is weak. This is the Iron Father here. Probably not pronounce him right. Fieros here, yeah, but looking excellent. Beautiful models. And uh, yeah, it's done it. This is a great sort of what I was talking about in the Ashram of the Tarim video. Uh, they released a supplement, a couple of new models to go with it. Uh, in which case, the Ashram of the Tarim, you'd be a standard unit of infantry, a unique unit of some kind, unique character perhaps of some kind, heavy weapons team, and then access to all the Ashram of the Tarim vehicles would be the way to go. Showcase it, very useful for all your painting references. So they are fighting against chaos there as well. So the emphasis is on the machine with these. Ah, successor chapters, right. So, Medusa, uh, Sons of Medusa, Brazen Claws, Iron Lords, which adds a bit more colouring. You're introducing red into this here. Look okay, and the red talent is almost like identical to Blood Angels just there. The machine endures, giving you an idea of a small 
fours, and then they're an idea as well. See the emphasis on vehicles, firepower, heavy guns, the sort of direction you're going with Iron Hand. So and you can choose your own chaps depending on your own play start and preference as well. So that's the great flexibility here as also. Okay, so uh, it's the Iron Father here, uh, 110 points for this guy. So what do you get? Power level, six, HQ choice. And if you're gonna go for new Iron Hands, you've gotta go for this character. I mean, it looks, it looks utterly incredible. Beautiful, beautiful model. Very really nice. Oh, fantastic work. Uh, movement five, weapon skill three plus, ballistic skill two plus, strength four, toughness five, he's got seven wounds, loads of wounds, five attacks. Leadership 9 of 2 up save. He's armed with a uh, bolt pistol, Gorgon's Wrath, Harrow, Harrow Hand, two servo arms, and only one per army. So bolt pistol usuals, Gorgon's Wrath hit, 36 inch range, heavy 3, strength 5, minus 2, 2 damage. That's that unique sort of heavy bolter type weapon there. Uh, the Harrow Hand, plus 3 strength, so fighting strength 7, 8 minus 2, 2 damage. And the servo arm, which is minus 1 to hit rolls, only one attack with each servo arm, so you will get two attacks of that. It's strength eight times times two, minus two and three damage. So he's got Angels of Death, so the usual rules, plus one attack on the charge and so on, so ridiculous amount of attacks. Signum Array, at the start of your shooting phase, you can select one for any Iron Hands unit that's within three inches of this model. Models in the selected unit have a ballistic skill of two plus until the end of that phase. So very, very useful indeed. He's got his own shooting ability as well, so he's not totally redundant. He can help there with his Gorgon's Wrath range 36 and would protect units uh, well enough as well. So yeah, great. Um, Master of the Forge, when this model repairs a vehicle model using its blessing of the Omnicide ability, that vehicle regains up to three lost wounds instead of D3. Utterly fantastic, I just, brilliant. Artificer Bionics, when this model, when this model would lose a wound, roll D6 and a five plus the wound is not lost. It makes them even tougher, he's seven wounds as well. Rights of tempering, models of friendly iron hands units have a five plus in fun save whilst there is six of him as well. Please come on. And then blessing of the omnisite at the end of your movement phase. This model can repair one friendly iron hands vehicle with an inch of it. Uh, that model regains D3 lost wounds. Each model can only be repaired once per turn. Okay. Okay. No, fantastic. So he's, he's got to be an auto include. I'm sure Games Workshop have tailored it that way that anyone that picks up this codex would want to pick up this model as well. But, you know, beautiful model. What a collector's item as well. If you're really into iron hands, you get new codex, all exciting, and you get a reward of a, a beautiful model and some fantastic rules. So it's a, a winner for everybody there. There they are fighting against the Tyranids. Sons of the Gorgon. So talking about you. Uh, if this model is Battle Forge, in addition to the attachment abilities gained from Codex Space Springs, units in the army with the Combat Doctrine's ability uh, gain the Calculated Fury ability, so long as, with the exception of unaligned units, every unit in the army is iron hands. Right, so again, you've got to keep that throughout your force. Uh, unit of every unit from your army is from the same Iron Hand successor chapter. Okay, it's calculated fury. When the Devastator Doctrine is active, models with this ability do not suffer the penalty of moving firing heavy weapons. You don't have to be a static gunman with these, it's encouraging, encouraging you to be on the move. In addition, whilst the Devastator Doctrine is active when resolving an attack made by a heavy weapon by model this ability, we roll hit rolls at once, and naturally roll ones as well. This is encouraging you to take your heavy weapons and be mobile at the same time. You don't have to be static. So, brilliant. Talking about success, the chapter's got to get your keywords matched up right and so on. And then your warlord traits, chapter relics. Again, talking about your chapters and keywords and so on. Stratagems. Know, stratagems, yeah, psychic powers. Not wish the iron hand success, chapters going no psychic powers and technomancy discipline in the same manner as Lubber in. in. Iron Hands, right, so we'll come to that bit later. When such a model uses one of the psychic powers, replace the Iron Hands keyword in all instances in that power, if any, with that model's chapter keyword. And tactical objectives are using your Iron Hands tactical objectives. Great. 
So, uh, Warlord Traits is next. Again, imagine this, you're trying to build your themed army. Uh, we're getting the idea it's firepower, but mechanite mobile, moving around the board, uh, but relying on your heavy firepower. Yeah, it's a tank marine type model that's unique here. So it's looking to repair vehicles, it's vehicles, heavy firepower is the theme. Um, so, Adept of the Omnisire. At the end of your movement phase, this Warlord can repair one for any Iron Hands vehicle model with an inch of them. The model regains one lost wound. Each model can only be repaired once per turn. If this model is a tech marine, each time they use their blessing of the Omnisai ability, the model they're repairing gains D3 plus one lost wounds, so D3. Right, it's making it even better at doing repairs. Great. And then uh, this model, this is uh, Will of Iron. This model can attempt to resist one psychic power in your opponent's psychic phase in the same manner as a psyker by taking Deny the Witch test. If this warlord is within 20 inches, the enemy model is manifest in psychic power. If this warlord is a librarian, they instead can attempt to deny one additional psychic power in your opponent's psychic phase. Okay, it's just a boost for that. Uh, all flesh is weakness when this warlord would lose a wound, or a d6 and a 5 plus wound is not lost. Useful, take like a Gravis captain, for example. Student of history, when this warlord consolidates, they can move up to 6 inches instead of 3. Do not have to end their move closer to the nearest enemy model. Fascinating. Quite useful, that one. Ability to consolidate six in any direction. Yeah, useful enough. Merciless logic. When resolving an attack made by a warlord on an unmodified hit roll of six, you make an additional attack against the same unit using the same weapon. This additional attack cannot regenerate another attack. It's not bad. And then target protocols. At the start of your shooting phase, select one for any Iron Hands unit within six of this warlord. Once at phase, and resolve an attack made by range weapon by a model from that unit, you can reroll hit rolls. You can reroll the hit roll. Once that phase and resolve an attack made by range weapon by model in that unit, you can reroll the wound roll. Once that phase and resolve an attack made by range weapon by model from that unit, you can reroll the damage roll. Yeah. Interesting. So, hey, there's a number of those are okay. Do you like the extra ability to restore even more wounds? Is useful. If you're going for a guy, a, a model that's going to be stuck in the thick of fighting, maybe consider that five plus. Ignoring wounds, useful like one third of the wounds that come through, especially if it's like seven, six, seven wounds, and that's uh, very useful indeed. That one, very useful. Right, relics next. So, uh, the axe of producer. So as you take your power axe and then you, you get this instead, plus three strength, five six strength, seven usually, eight minus three and a straight three damage. Excellent, there's no minus to hit rolls. So brilliant, relic. Excellent relic. Uh, Aegis, the Aegis Ferrum, primary model only, add one to the toughest characteristic model of this relic, resolve an attack made uh, against that model, reduce any damage inflicted by one to a minimum of one. So I think Gravis Captain, look at toughest six. I think for that, it's tough as five already. The Mind Forge. Model equipped with a Force Sword, Force Axe, and Force Stove. This is one of your librarians. This relic replaces a Force Sword, Force Axe here. It gives you times two strength. So, strength eight, even minus three and D3 damage. All of a sudden, a really well forged weapon there as well. Uh, the Betrayer's Bane. So, this is for Combi Melter. It replaces that. Uh, when you choose this weapon to shoot with, select one of the one or both of the profiles below. If you select both, it's minus one to hit rolls. The bolt gun, here is uh, range 24, rapid fire one, strength four, AP zero one damage, as usual. And the melter gun, range 12, assault two, pretty good. It's really good. Strength eight, minus four, D6 damage. And as an attack, my best weapon's melter gun profile against target within half range, or two D6, you choose the best. The iron stone. I'm resolving an attack made by an Iron Hands vehicle unit within three inches of a friendly model of this relic. Reduce any damage inflicted by one to a minimum of one. Yeah, very, very useful because it's a bubble here. It's any units nearby. If you get plastered by a load of D, uh, damage two weapons, you can knock it down to damage one. Just to take the edge off the damage coming through. So yeah, pretty solid that one. So I would say I do like some of these relics here. That axe was really good. Just a guarantee flat three damage. And this iron stone here is uh, oh, excellent as well. The tempered helm. Whilst a model from your army of this relic is on the battlefield, you can roll 1d6 for each command point you spend to use a stratagem. On a 5 plus, that command point is refunded. You can only have one command point refunded per battle round by this relic. So 5 plus is to regain. 
again useful. These are all really good. Uh, the Gorgon's Chain model with this relic has a 4 plus invun save. Useful if you've not got a model that hasn't got one. Then resolve an attack made by ranged weapon against that model. Subtract one from the wound roll. Okay. These are all pretty, pretty good. As long as you get relics and stratagems and water traits, they seem quite pointless or useless or very minimal. But these all look solid enough. Very good. So next, uh, special issue war gear. Uh, so uh, if your army is led by an Iron Hands Warlord or a Warlord drawn from an Iron Hands successor chapter, you can give one of the following special issue war gear relics to an Iron Hands character model from your army or a character model from your army that's drawn from the Iron Hands successor chapters. Instead of giving it a relic from the Codex Space Marines, these are considered to be chapter relics for all rules purposes. Name characters and vehicle models cannot be given any of the following rules. So adamantine mental uh, model this when a model with this relic loses a wound or dice in a five plus the wound is not lost fine artificer armor two up save five plus in one save uh, when you give this model relic select one weapon this model is equipped with cannot be a weapon whose profile includes the word mastercrafted f1 to damage characteristic that weapon the weapon is considered to be a chapter relic so okay these were okay digital weapons when the model this relic fights you can make one additional attack Using the close combat weapon profile when resolving the attack, if the hit if the hit is scored, the target suffers a mortal wound, and the attack sequence ends. A chance to get a mortal wound. It's all right. These are stronger. Uh, Auto Medicaid Bionics. If a model with this relic has lost any wounds at the start of your turn, it regains D3. Uh, that's interesting. Quite rare you'll see that. Models are able to heal themselves. Add mech dirt. So that's the crossover here between this chapter type with the Admech uh, forces. Teeth of Mars. So Chainsword becomes strength for the user, 8 minus 2 and 2 damage. Uh, you make, when this bear fights, you make an additional attack this weapon. So I'm going to take my burst weapon against the vehicle. Uh, it's a strength characteristic of times 2. Bad. And then Haywire Bolts. And you give this model this relic, select one bolt weapon. That model is equipped with. When the bearer shoots that weapon, you can choose to fire, choose for it to fire a haywire bolt. If you do, you can make one, only one attack with that weapon. But resolving that attack, if it is made against a vehicle, an unmodified wound roll of four to five inflicts D3 mortal wounds on the target in addition to any other damage, and an unmodified roll of six inflicts three mortal wounds on the target in addition to any other damage. It's all right, not bad. Yeah. It's not one use only. I don't think. No, so that's pretty good. Uh, Fortis Pattern Data Spike. Tech Marine only. When a model of this relic uses their blessing of the undesirability, roll two dice when determining how many wounds, how many lost wounds are regained, and discard one of the results. Okay, stratagems. Two pages of stratagems here. So, Mercy is Weakness. One command point. Use the stratagem in the shooting phase of the fight phase when Iron Hands unit for your army is chosen to shoot or fight with. Select one enemy unit until the end of that phase. Every attack made by a model in the Iron Hands unit from your army that can target the selected unit must do so, but when resolving such an attack, an unmodified wound of six wounds the target twice instead of once. Yeah, and it seems to be, uh, I played a few games recently with James, so you'll need larger units uh, with infantry and so on to partake of these, to make the most out of these stratagems come through, just to maximise the number of shots and then able to give you a boost to the stratagems. So, double wounds potentially. Mercy is weakness. Methodical firepower uses stratagem, you know, like space room firepower is you know, deadly enough now, but then it's iron hands if you really want to <laughs> beef up your firepower. Uh, methodical firepower. Use the strategy at the start of your movement phase. If the Devastator Doctrine is not active, select one Iron Hands unit from your army to the start of your next movement phase when resolving the tank made by model in that unit. The Devastator Doctrine is treated as being active in addition to the currently active Doctrine. Okay. So a bit of tactical flexibility there. So they may be able to count as having the Devastator Doctrine in play. March of the Ancients. Use the strategy before the battle after nominating model to be your warlord. Select one Iron Hands Dreadnought from your army. That model gains the character keyword. Add one to the attack's leadership characteristic of that model. Oh. Does that mean 
Yeah, I think it does. For example, if you then take, it's only one command point to do it. If you then take a venerable dreadnought, regular one, these eight wounds, character keyword, all of a sudden, you're gonna obscure and hide that character away, that model away from trouble, because your opponent can't target them. So that is particularly useful. Uh, vengeance for Istvan five. Use this stratagem in the fight phase, an Iron Hands unit from army is chosen to fight with. To the end of that phase, you resolve an attack made by a melee weapon by modeling the unit against the word bearers, Iron Warriors, Night Lords, or Alpha Legion unit, you can reroll the hit roll. Okay. Uh, Rough Hall Machine Spirit, two command points. So use this stratagem in shooting phase in the, or in the fight phase, when an Iron Hands vehicle model from your army is chosen to shoot or fight with. To the end of that phase, you resolve an attack made by that model, you can reroll the hit roll. Okay. Two command points for that. Souls of Iron. One command point. Use the stress from your opponent's psychic phase. When enemy psychic model manifests a psychic power in 20 inches of an Iron Hands unit from your army, after you need to know which attempt, roll one d6 and a four plus that psychic power is resisted. Just a straight four up. Cool. Useful that. Not bad at all. Sign of the Forge. One command point. Use this strategy before the battle. Select one Iron Hands model from your army that has the word Sergeant in their profile. That model can have the following special issue war gear relics, even though they're not a character. Master crafty weapon, digital weapons, teeth of Mars, haywire bolts. Yeah, haywire bolts. That's really good. All of the relics your army includes must be different and be given different model to be given to different models. Brilliant. Sign of the Forge, excellent one. I'd, I'd use that, I reckon. And just put that haywire bolt on one of the sergeants, for example. Excellent. Next is reject the flesh, embrace the machine. Use a strategy in any phase with nine hands infantry from army is chosen as the target of an attack. To end that phase, and a model in that unit lose, would lose a wound, roll d6, adding one to result if the model has the all flesh is weakness, wall or trait. And five plus the wound is not lost. Excellent. Yeah, it's all useful enough. This looks a powerful supplement, this one. You know, if you're a Iron Hands player, you say, oh, I don't really need the codex. You know, the supplement's no good. Oh, I don't really need it. I can get by, but you're going to miss out a lot of stuff here. Okay. Uh, engine Purge. Two command points. Use this strategy from the start of your movement phase. If a Devastator Doctrine is active, and to the start of the next battle round, we resolve an attack made by a heavy or grenade weapon by an Iron Hands model from your army. Unmodified wound roll of six. Uh, add an additional one to the arm penetration characteristic of that weapon for that attack. You can only use this strategy once per battle. Okay. Okay, interesting. The Gorgon's Rage. One command point. Use this strategy in the fight phase when an Iron Hands unit from your army is chosen to fight with. To the end of that phase, resolve an attack made by a melee weapon by a model in that unit. Add one to the hit roll. In addition, to the end of that phase, resolve an attack made by a melee weapon by a model in a unit against an Empress Children unit. Add one to the wind roll. So there's dead set against chaos. These iron hands, for sure. Uh, co cogitated, cogitated, martyred, mart. It's not martyrdom. It's martyr room. Must be martyrdom, not martyr room. It looks like two O's. It must be a a D though, martyrdom. I'm just looking for a D somewhere else. Doctrines. Yeah, the D and the O are very similar. It must be martyrdom. Can't be a martyr room. Um. Anyway, use a strategy at the start of the shooting phase. Select an Iron Hands infantry unit for your army. At the end of that phase, a friendly Iron Hands character model within three inches of that unit would lose any wounds as a result of an attack made against that model. The units can attempt to intercept their attack. Wow. Or a D6 or two plus. That model does not lose those wounds. The unit suffers a mortal wound for each of those wounds. So it's not an auto model slain, you've got a primaris model, you can absorb a mortal wound and on two engines still stay alive. Only one attempt can be made to intercept each attack. Wow. You would lose any wounds as a result of an attack. Intercept that attack. It's a two plus. Yeah, brilliant. 
Fantastic. So you can protect decent characters with a nearby squad. Excellent. Brilliant, brilliant cards. Machine Empathy. One command point. Use a strategy. Move phase off an iron hands. Tech Marine model from your army has used their blessing of the Omnisire ability. That unit can use their ability again. And the repair model has already been repaired that turn. Solid as a rock. Excellent. If you're making it guaranteed three wounds restored, all traits are plus one, you're going to kick out a lot of wounds being restored with that. And it's just one command point. Uh, Paragon of Iron. One command point uses strategy before the battle after nominating Iron Hands character model that is not a named character to be your warlord. You can generate one additional warlord trait for them. Uh, this must be from the Iron Hands warlord table. All the warlord traits you include must be different. If randomly generated, reroll duplicate results. You can only use a strategy once per battle. Uh, optimal Repulsion Doctrines. Use a strategy in your opponent's one command point in your opponent's charge phase. When an Iron Hands unit from your army fires Overwatch. And to the end of that phase, resolving an overwatch attack made by a model in that unit, a hit roll of 5 or 6 scores a hit, you're doubling the effectiveness of your overwatch. If the unit has the flesh is weak, chapter tactic, when resolving an overwatch, it's 4, 5 or 6 is a hit instead. Another very powerful strategy and cheap as well. Uh, Minimonic auto savant. Two command points, use a strategy at the end of the turn after achieving a tactical objective. With nine hands. All from your armies on the battlefield. Do not discard that tactical doctrine. At the start of the next turn it is once again active. You can only use a strategy in the mission if you're playing uses the mission you're playing uses tactical objectives. You can only use a strategy once per battle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's tactically useful. And then bequeathed by the Iron Council. One command point. Use a stratagem after nominating model drawn from Nine Hands successor chapters to be your warlord. You can give a relic of producer to a character model from that army. It's drawn from the Nine Hands successor chapter instead of giving them a special issue. As you can gain access to it anyway. Or a chapter relic from Codex Space Marines as well. If you do, replace your Iron Hands keyword and all instances on the relic, if any, with that model's chapter keyword. You're going to use that stratagem once per battle. Excellent. Okay, so a solid set of uh, stratagems there. And then plus remember you've got the stratagems from the Codex Space Marines all on top of that as well. Playing James the other day, uh, he was using Ultramarines, uh, using the supplement, and he had a vast array of cards laid out. Is that a downside? Because I remember at 7th edition, towards the end of it, Games Workshop racing away these different publications, tons of extra rules, loads of stuff going on, got a little bit too much, so... You've got to be careful not to get too carried away that you, people are swamped with so much stuff. But then there's the opposite side of that is you're getting the depth and the uniqueness of each of these chapters as well. well look at the Technomancy Discipline next. Psychers here. Yeah? Fascinating. So, bless, Blessing of the Machine God is number one. Uh, it's a warp charge value of five. It's very easy to make the score off. If manifested, select one friendly Iron Hands vehicle model within 12 of the Psyker. You can only select a Titanic model if the result of the Psychic test is an 8 or more. To the start of your next Psychic phase, resolving any attack mode of that model, add one to the hit roll. It's plus one to hit rolls. Very straightforward. Uh, Obduration Mechanicum has a warp charge value of 7. Manifested, select one enemy unit within 18 and visible to the Psyker. To the start of your next Psychic phase, resolve an attack made by a ranged weapon by a model in that unit. A modified hit roll of 1. The unit suffers a mortal wound after resolving that attack. Hmm. Okay. So, yes, okay. Could be annoying. There's a lot of shots, potentially. Okay. Uh, Fury of Medusa. The warp charge value of 6. If manifest is select one enemy model within 18. Visible to the Psyker. Draw the shortest possible imaginary straight line, 1mm wide, between the Psyker's base and the model's base. Uh, roll 1d6 for the selected model's unit and each other enemy unit that this line passes across. Adding 2 to the result if the unit being rolled for is a vehicle. On 4 or 5, the unit suffers a mortal wound. And then on a 6 plus, it's D3 more to wins. And it's two to the results. You could roll a five, it becomes a seven. So more, much more likely to get us D3 more to wins. So 
Yeah. If you're clever with that one, it's pretty good range, range 18. So you could catch the models out with that. Not bad at all. Uh, Psy Steel Armor. Thought charge value of 6. Selector friendly. Iron Hands unit of 12 of the Psyker. To start with the Psyker phase, resolve an attack made, by, made against that unit. Add 1 to the saving throw. Even one save is not affected. It's plus 1 to your save. For a 6. Not bad. Reforge. Gawk charge value of 5. If manifest, select one friendly Iron Hands vehicle model within 3 inches and visible to the Psyker. He can cause them to regain lost wounds. Cool. Pretty good. I guess that can be stacked on top of a repair. So I'm not sure about that one. I think you probably could do that. Not sure though. Uh, machine Flens. Is a charge value of 6. If manifest, select an enemy vehicle unit within 18 invisible to the Psyker. The unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. You can then select one other enemy unit that was within 6 of invisible to that vehicle unit when the power is manifested. Select 1d6 for each model mortal wound that vehicle unit suffered. Each 3 plus, the other selected unit suffers one mortal wound. Okay. And then uh, people have asked me to go through the tactical objectives. So we'll cover that. Get six of them. Here, uh, methodical destruction. When this tactical objective is generated, select up to three enemy units on the battlefield. Score one victory point for each of those units that was destroyed as a result of an attack made by a ranged weapon by an iron hands unit from your army. This turn, score D3 plus three victory points instead of all three units were destroyed in the same phase. So, yeah, solid. That one, no problem at all. Advance and secure. Score on victory point if you control objective marker closer to the center of the battlefield at the end of your turn. If several objective markers are equally close, you achieve this if you control any of those objective markers at the end of your turn. So again, it seems to be not gun lines sitting at the back, but heavy weapons, but the flexibility to move. And here it's encouraging you to, to go for the center of the table. Almost like Necrons in a way. I, know, I think it's these two factions absolutely hate each other. Uh, Iron Hands and Necrons, but Similar play style, controlling and dominating the centre of the board seems to be the style here. March of the Machines. Score one victory point of an Iron Hands. Dreadnought from your army, finish an advance or charge move wholly within the enemy's deployment zone. An easy one to pick up. Uh, destroy the weak. D3 victory points, at least one enemy unit was destroyed as a result of an attack made by an Iron Hands model from your army during both the shooting and the fight phase. Again, uh, the encouragement of getting into the middle of the table, winning in close combat, you know, make it stand up for yourself against the right targets, and again, the encouragement to go for shooting results, you know, destroying units with firepower. The strength of metal is uh, one command point, uses tactical objective. Well, whilst this tactical objective is active, keep a tally of how many times Iron Hands models from army would lose a wound they subsequently not lost, e.g., due to. Flesh is weak, chaps, tactic artifice, the bionics. It's got one entry point if this tactical objective is still active when the tally reaches 10. So just keeping track of that. Fine, and then Cold Fury. Score one victory point if enemy units were destroyed as a result of an attack made by an enhanced vehicle model from your army this turn. Score D3 victory points instead if three or more enemy units were destroyed as a result of an attack made by an enhanced vehicle model this turn. Yep, so great. Those all seem fine, brilliant, really are good. And they've even given you uh, a random name generator as well. God, didn't expect that. So, there's only one unit entry in here, but the value is in this. You know, if you're into a chapter, this is, you know, I can't wait for the Imperial Fist one to come out. Now I'm gonna get my own books, certain place style, certain relics, traits, and so on, and yeah, I'm just wondering if they'd re-sculpt Lysander. Cool. I mean, if they did, he would look utterly amazing. He's an old model. Would he get the primaris treatment? I wonder. I wonder if they'll do that with uh, the Imperial Fist. But eventually something new, probably a character, but who knows. Okay, it's exciting stuff. So the, this is that's the Codex review finished. Thanks very much to Games Workshop for sending me this copy uh, ahead of time. It's been a bit of delay. I've been out of the country and 
Uh, I've come back and this codex is here, so I've, I've put this review together as soon as I can. Uh, I usually get my uh, Games Workshop stuff from GamingFigures.com, so you can check them out. They do Games Workshop a discounted rate. Uh, other loads of other gaming systems available from them also. So this is a strong supplement, perhaps the strongest one so far. Uh, they're, all, they're all pretty good by the, the sounds of it, what I've gone through so far, but this one seems particularly strong. And it's strong in every aspect. It seems like the stratums are excellent, wall traits are great, the relics are excellent, um, and so you're able to build a nicely strong themed list, fine hands, and there's some great abilities you can tap into when you have the supplement. So there it is, that's the review. Keep a look out for more reviews. It'll be fascinating to review each of these chapters as they come along. But there it is. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.